Lindsay here, the Frugal Crafter. Today we're going to paint a nice tall glass of raspberry lemonade or strawberry lemonade, whatever kind of lemonade you like to have. I'm going to use a variety of brushes, probably not all of these, but I just grabbed a few so I'd have them. Basically make sure you have a medium sized round, a small round, and a flat of some sort. Uh, larger rounds are good if you like to work large or spatter, but you probably don't need it for this. I'm going to be using my Sennelier Le Petite Aquarelle, and the neat thing about this set is that the center area is there's nothing in there and you can use that to store a brush or you can put extra half pans in there which I did here but I'm going to be using the um, Le Petite Aquarelle colors that are on the outsides because I think they're really nice and they're a really great value if you're looking to get started they remind me a lot of the expensive uh, artist grade sennelier paints I'm going to sketch with a red erasable colored pencil this is a Prismacolor Call Erase I'm really enjoying using these pencils and the photo I'm working from is from Unsplash and it is by Whitney Wright and I will link that down below. I'm only going to use one of the drinks that are in this picture though and I'm going to start by making an ellipse here kind of about a third of the way down, a third of the way over. So if you know the rule of thirds you know how um, kind of having things offset and having things if you put a three by three grid over your paper having things land where those grids intersect is nice and pleasing and I'm going to draw really really light because I don't want to um, I don't want to commit to my lines till I'm absolutely sure that they're right so after I've got the basic tall glass drawn I like to flip it over because then I can totally see if something is off so this side is more slanted than this I kind of like that slanted side so I'm going to bring this side out a little bit more I'm going to refine my ellipse and I don't know what it is but flipping it around it just gives your eyes that little that that I don't know that new perspective so that you can draw something a little bit more accurate now I'm not gonna freak if it's not absolutely perfect this is gonna be a looser style painting in fact I think this would be a really nice one to have um, on a greeting card or postcard. I actually painted this last, the same reference photo last year, but I didn't film it because I was sitting on my porch and I was just kind of painting. It was a beautiful summer day. And then I just, um, I shared the photo on Instagram. I'm drawing a little strawberry over the edge here. I shared the photo on Instagram and then I just, I just mailed the postcard off to a subscriber. So um, I really enjoyed that. I'm like, oh, I, I kind of want to do that again. That was really fun. And so that's what I'm doing right now. I'm just going to draw the little strawberry hulls draw a little uh, mint sprig in the glass. It's so nice to put fresh mint in your lemonade or other drinks this time of year. It grows so well too, so if you have a black thumb like me, you can actually get it to grow, which is nice. That mint going over the edge, maybe a little leaf on the inside. We'll put some ice cubes. Um, you can draw this with a regular graphite pencil. I'm just really enjoying using the um, uh, the call erase pencils these days. I find they're, I don't know, it's just kind of fun to not draw with gray, to have like a color. I'm going to put some, looks like there's some, looks like there's some ice that's falling down to the bottom. I wouldn't think the ice would sink, but I'm just going to put that in there. It gives it a nice texture and color. Now I'm going to put a uh, half a lime over here, I think. I'm just going to draw a circle, draw a little bit for dimension, a little bit on the edge. I'm not going to put too much detail in there because the red and the green might um, clash a little bit and I think I'll put a strawberry overlapping it. So I'm just kind of like taking the, ima the images I see on the um, on the reference photo but moving them around in different places and if your glass doesn't look uh, quite right somewhere you can always overlap something so it kind of distracts if you're not sure if you have it have it correct or not and um, those three items I'm thinking that might be that might be enough I wouldn't mind putting a lime wedge in there but I feel like I filled this space up pretty well so I think I'm gonna leave it at that so now I'm actually gonna take that big brush you don't have to use a big brush but I want to just kind of flick on some water so I'll have a little bit of a um, have a loose loose feeling to it and I think I actually might flick on some of the colors I plan on using so I'm going to move my brushes I'm going to move my palette so it's a little bit more 
in frame. So I didn't end up erasing anything. If you want to lighten your lines, you can go ahead and take a like a white eraser and just kind of go over any of the lines you want to lighten up, remove, or just make a little bit softer. So I'm going to make my palette here. I think I'll use some of this beautiful kind of like spring green color. I'll start by flicking some of that on there. Oh gosh, I hope I don't get any of my camera. I've done that before and I've had to clean the lens afterwards. And while I'm at it, I will take some of that and add it to my lime. This is going to dry really light, so I'm not really too worried about it. Add a little bit into my mint. I'm going to get a little bit of lemon yellow. Any of your cool yellows. And I'll just throw a little bit in the, in the lemonade area, even though I'll be putting some pink in there. I'm keeping my colors pretty watery here at this point. I like to have the splashes just because um, it can add just a little bit of, of uh, ambiance. And I also like to dab some color around too. Really, really pale right now. I'm not working with anything really dark. Now, let me go with, let's do a nice carmine. That's pretty. Let's add some of that right to our strawberry. I'm actually going to go to a smaller brush. That one's a little, little big for that. Let's go. I'm going to use this number eight round Princeton Neptune. I'm going to add a little bit of that into the glass. Going around the mint. What I'm really after here is a really fun kind of summery painting. I also want to put some of that color in the background. Can dab some of that around too. So fun. Have fun with it. All right, now I'm going to mix some of that um, lemon yellow with some of that carmine. And that's going to give us a color of our, our cup here. It's going to give us a color of our lemonade. It's raspberry lemonade. It's got more of a, you, got, you know, the pulpiness of it. It's got more of that color in there. And I can also give some of that color into the strawberries. Sorry if my hand's in the way there. I'm using very absorbent brushes because I want it really to have that watercolor character. I didn't tape this paper down. The paper I'm using is Hannah Mule Cezanne, 140 pound. Painting in a really wet and wet technique. Um, I haven't added any blues yet. I think the blue that I will use will be, let's see, maybe, I think I might use Ultramarine. I was going to use Stalo, but then I thought that's going to overtake a little too much. So let me take some of the, the Ultramarine and some of the Carmine. Make a nice dark color for my strawberry shadow. I want this to be the type of painting that you can just like chill out, splash some paint around, have a good time. I'm dabbing in some pulp here. You know how you have like, when you have the, the fruit kind of muddled in a drink, you can see the, like the chunks in the bottom. Haven't used this palette in a while. Oh, it's so nice. I really like it. 
I like to let some of the color just kind of spill out from the glass because when the light's hitting everything, it's like summery, you have those, those colors just kind of spilling here and there, and I like that. All right, I'll take some of that blue and I'll add it to the green. Let's see what kind of color we get when we mix those two together. That'll work for the skin on the, on the lime. This might feel a little like, um, a little too crazy for some of you. You know, it might feel like, ah, I have no control. Everything is just flooding. Uh, but sometimes it's just fun to do that. I really like it. Um, a bunch of the brushes I'm using here are from Royal and Langnickel, and I wanted to mention that because um, they have very affordable brushes, and um, I don't know if you have an AC Moore in your town, but they had like their Menta brushes for, for $10, and um, that's what these that's what these are. These are the the ones without the scraper handles. The ones with the gold with the kind of like golden hairs are the mixed media. Those are firm, firmer. They work great for watercolor though. But then they have the Minta uh, watercolor ones that are very absorbent, like I started off with. So four for ten dollars, you can't beat it. I think it's they're normally about um, five dollars each, which I think is a really good price anyway. But I just wanted to mention that in case you have an AC more, I just. Um, I just saw in their sales flyer that they're on sale this week. I actually intended to go and get some t-shirts for some tie-dyeing yesterday, but I ended up not having the amount of time to do my errands because I somehow managed to get lost in, uh, in a town I've been to a million times. But, uh, yeah, that would be me. I think that having a GPS has just made my sense of direction all the worse. Okay, I'm just pulling some of that shadow down. Hopefully it's not glaring too much and you can see what I'm doing. So I want to use a smaller brush and um, I try to mix my colors without a ton of water in it when I want to be able to keep some edges when I'm doing this technique. Now you could go right off a dry pan, but since I'm mixing I really can't do that. Um, and that will let you keep your lines a little bit when you're going wet into wet or you're going next to something wet you'll get a little bit of a softening of the line but it won't completely mush. I like this paper because it does um, it's very heavily sized and I tend to enjoy that in a paper and it keeps your your paper just stays wet for so long. And of course, I'm painting, um, well, not of course, you might not know that. I'm painting in my basement today, so, you know, my paper does tend not to dry out so fast when I'm painting down here. I added some yellow there. And get the little holes in the strawberry here. Okay, I think I'll do just a little bit of... Very, very watered down ultramarine blue on the ice. Just to give it the hint that it's ice and not something else up here. Ice pressed against the glass, maybe. And I think I'll also use a little bit of that. Maybe add a little bit of that orangey color I mixed to it to make a gray. Oops, let's move that over so you can see. So I took ultramarine, a little bit of that orange color, made that gray. And I am going to add that into the back of the glass. And I'm going to add it into the sides of the glass. Oh, I can add that into the ice too. Oh, I just love the way the colors just mix and mingle. Now, if you don't like how I have colors spilling out over the edge, then just don't flick the water onto your paper before you begin. That's what that's from. I like it, but I know it's not for everyone. I know it could be distracting. I know where I'm going to go with this after, so I'm not too worried about it, but it could be uh, distracting if you're not exactly sure where I'm headed with it. I keep wanting to push this out of my way so I don't rest my hand in it. Getting kind of a blue-gray color here to add into some parts of the lime. Trying not to touch the lime into the strawberry right at the top there because I want the strawberry to be a little bit lighter. And 
I think I might want to add a little bit of color to the background. Right there, so I'm just going to take a brush with clear water, just kind of dab it a little bit, and then I think I'll add in some yellow, lemon yellow. And maybe a little bit of the carmine. I like how there's so many mixing areas here. I'm not really mixing, I'm just kind of making sure how watery I have it on my palette. Throw some of that in there too. And I think I'll also grab some of the ultramarine blue. And add some of that in there. So you do have to kind of trust yourself that, you know, that, like trust what you're doing a little bit. I know it might be a little bit hard working in such a loose, wet to wet manner, but um, I think it's so fun because it just feels like, you know, you're just sitting by the beach and everything is just awesome and everything is just kind of getting splashed <laughs> and it's hot out. So you don't even care that everything's getting splashed. You can kind of put your hand over an area if you want to stop it. I like to do green right next to the red because it makes the colors pop. All right, at this stage, I'm going to let it dry and then we'll come back. We'll add a few details and we'll call it done. I can't resist. I'm going to add a little bit of salt into that background where it is so wet. It's really light. I don't think it's going to be a really strong effect, but uh, I'm just like, you know, that would be pretty. <laughs> I kind of wish I did it before the, uh, the, the lemonade started to dry up, but um, that'll just give us a little bit of interest in our background, and I think it'll be really fun. Okay, we'll be back when it's dry. Welcome back! Okay, well I have let this stuff dry. I actually did use my heat tool because um, it was taking quite a while to dry on this paper. Um, I really like this Suzanne paper. Anyway, uh, you can see a little bit of texture there from the salt. Not a ton because I didn't have a lot of pigment there, but it's something. So now what I'm going to do is go with the small brush again, number two. This is the Espresso, Espresso from Royal and Landau. It's one of their synthetic um, sable brushes and it's actually more designed designed for uh, oil painting, but I, I like it for watercolor. So um, I have I have a few in my oil stash, but most of them in my watercolor stash because I really, I really like them. I like to paint with different medias and I don't think there's anything wrong with that um, because sometimes you're just in a different, you're in a different mood for different things, I think. Um, so what I'm going to do is be very judicious with what I add to this because I love this loose, fresh feeling that I have going on. So I've got a little reflection there on the top of the ellipse. And I've also got some on the edge of the glass. So here's where I'm working on dry paper. I really want things to be nice and sharp. I am kind of doing lost and found edges, meaning I've got, I'll have some edges and then I'll lift up my brush and not have an edge. Um, I'm gonna put some down here. We've got this thickness of glass. I've got that little sliver of white I want to preserve. Picking up some more of that carmine. A little concentration of color there. Maybe we've got a little slice of berry in there. I love that little, that, that red next to the green. I just think those colors, they, well, think they're opposites. They're complementary. They make each other seem brighter. I love that. I was trying to, th I was thinking, this is so funny, after that video I posted the other day about um, responding to criticism and stuff, and, you know, when I think of, like, when I had the most fun making tutorials, it's when I was doing stuff like this. I was just kind of like, well, I've got 20 minutes before I have to run out and do this or that. Of course, I had little snippets of time. My kids were little, so I didn't have as much time, and I really wasn't worried about it. I'm like, hey, you can watch if you like. If you don't like it, then skip it. You know, I didn't, I wasn't really, like, putting all this pressure on myself. And, um, and that's like, kind of like what I'm doing today. It's like, um, my husband has a, has a freelance gig he's working on outside of the house. So I don't have him to edit and I've got to get uh, Penny, my new puppy to the vet pretty soon. So it's like, I've got, I've got 20 minutes. Let's do a painting, you know, watch it if you like. <laughs> and you know, it's like, it's, it's bringing some of my joy back. Actually, probably having a puppy is bringing some of my joy back too, because, uh, after I lost Hazel, I didn't think I would ever, 
have another dog again. I was so heartbroken. I'm like, I don't want to go through this again. But, um, but I think it was time. Time for a little pupper. Okay, so I'm just kind of going around some of the ice cubes here. I like that color, that blue that I have in there. I love some of those blurry edges. I don't want to get rid of all of them. So that's really, when in doubt, just kind of take a break, step back, and you can always come back to it later. In this stage where we're going kind of wet over dry, you don't have to, you don't have to do everything in one go. You can kind of just wet a little area, work on that bit, and, uh, and then leave it and let it dry and come back to it if you want to. I do need to strengthen the ellipse there, so I'm going to grab a little bit of my, um, yeah, my ultramarine blue that I've mixed in with that orangey color. That I, we haven't used many colors. Gosh, what have we used? We've used like green, we've used yellow, we've used red, we've used blue. Eh, that's it. We've used four colors. That's another great thing about not getting too crazy with your pigments. Not like, I love having a lot of different colors to pick from, but I don't use a lot of colors in any given painting because... It tends to look amateurish. It tends to look a little distracting. When you mix from like three to five pigments, you're gonna have a much stronger composition. Now with this really pale, watery, blue-gray color, I can go in and, and define edges a little bit more. It's not as strong as the red. I don't like to have just a color hanging out by itself. I do like to work it in, so I'm going to work it in on some of those ice cubes. And when in doubt, take a step back. Because I know like, if I step back and I look at the monitor, my camera monitor, and that that's enough to give me like a fresh perspective on this, and I can say, oh, okay, that looks fine. I don't need to do more to that. Or I could, I could do a little bit more to that. You know, it's just having that little bit of perspective there. Okay, I'm going to skip to the green now. I'm going to take that light green. That's an odd color for me to have chosen, really. I, <laughs> I could have just gone with like a phthalo blue and mixed it with a lemon yellow and gotten a nice green, but I decided I wanted to use some ultramarine. Part of that is because I like the granulating properties of ultramarine. Adding just a little bit of detail to the to the hulls and to my mint. So the strawberry hulls are darker. Um, then the mint. So for on the mint, I'm just using that color to um, to like shadow and outline. Got this piece of mint kind of coming over the edge. And I'm just going to add that color to the inside where it's overlapped. This can be a little tricky because I really just had kind of like blobs. I didn't really have anything really strongly defined. And I'm just kind of making making leaves out of the shapes that I have there. So something you could do if this is just feeling way too loosey-goosey, you could um, you could go in, you could print out the reference photo, you could trace it, um, and then you could even go in with like a clear crayon or some masking fluid. You could mask out the areas that you want to remain light. Uh, that might make you feel a little bit more comfortable rather than just charging right in. Because you do have to, you have to um, kind of remember where everything's going to go, which can be a little tricky, honestly. Okay, I want some of that darker color down here on the edge of this lemon rind. I think I'll just kind of stipple it a little bit, give it some texture. Yeah, just give it kind of a little bit of an outline there on the bottom. I might go in a little white gel pen. I did lose the white of that, the pith of the lemon, the lime here. And I could darken that a little bit. I'm going to skip to that purple that I mixed. That was just the carmine and the ultramarine blue. I already have it mixed here, so maybe a little bit more blue in there. I have it kind of thick, kind of whole milk consistency. And I am going to define the edge of my strawberry. I'm not worried that it's kind of bled out there. That's fine. I like having that color in the background. And I'm just stippling on to give the appearance of texture. 
to give the appearance of like those little cavities where the seeds are. This paper is a, this is a cold pressed paper, but it does have a decent amount of texture to it. So I can kind of just, um, I can kind of drag my paper, my, my brush along and it will, um, it'll skip a little bit, especially if I use the side of the brush. Any color you have used with glass, like on anything, you can sneak into the glass. Like if like you, if you're kind of like, ah, I wish I had a little more contrast there. You got that dark purple, go in there and add it. It's not going to hurt anything. Glass reflects so interestingly. I want to get that double line there so you can kind of see the lip of the glass. I want to get a little bit of that grayish blue color in here too on the back side of the glass. All right, I want to mix um, a shadow color for on the table area. I'm going to do that with a bigger brush. I'm going to use this one. Now, let's see. I like the blue and orange combination, which is basically blue, red, and yellow, but I've already got the orange mix, so I'm just going to grab that. And I just want to add little bits. And shadows can help make things um, go together a little bit. This is a kind of a still life lighting, meaning the light's kind of overhead. So your shadow gets kind of spilled off in all directions, but it's not like a terribly long shadow. Or sometimes in still lifes you have multiple lighting sources. So now I'm just going in with a damp brush. I'm just going to touch the edges of that shadow. Clean off my brush again. Wipe the excess and just kind of drag it out a little bit. Just gives it a little bit of weight. Maybe go in even behind it a little bit, help help give it a little sense of place. Paint around my lime and strawberry there. You know what? I think I'll line my paper up because I am awful at uh, doing straight lines. above that little line there. It's amazing how something like that can help you. I mean, it's so simple and kind of silly, but it can help. And then if you want, I think I'll take a smaller brush and add in, I don't know, I'll use this one, this one's fine. Add in little flicks of color into that background where I just put the help kind of um, what from a call it help it uh, match everything else can dab in some color this is really pretty paper so when you have pretty paper um, and you just let the pigment do its thing on it it just looks so nice and I can blot that off the lime I don't really want those blue specks on the lime and blot it off the drink too. Maybe mix up a little bit more of that. I like that color. And I can take this tiny brush and dab some of it in there. I just like it. Have fun with it. I mean, you don't have to play with in the paint this long, but if you like to, then do it. Art is personal. You can watch a tutorial and not love the painting that the person painted, but you could learn something that you can apply to your own work. That happens all the time. Like I'll see something, it's like, well, that style is not my cup of tea, but I really can use that technique in something that I like to do. And I'll see paintings and I'm like, oh, I really like that. I would have done it like this, but that looks cool too. And just kind of make a mental note of that. And next time you're painting something where that technique would be applicable, you can do your thing. I think there's like a lot of commenting like, well, I wouldn't do it that way. 
Well, it's like, no, you want your different artist. You know, rather than pooping on somebody's party, think about how that technique could be applicable to something that you feel like doing. And I think most people do that. I think most people are very good and awesome and like they can see how a technique could be useful to them. I love this carmine on its own. These Sennelier colors, the Le Petit Aquarelle, I think like that range is one of the closest, when you have the student grade and the artist range together, I think that is one of the closest student to artist ranges. And the light fastness is decent. It's pretty, I think it's actually really good. Uh, they use most of the same pigments. I mean, not in the cadmiums and cobalts, I don't think, but in like the majority of the colors. I'm very impressed. I should use this one more often. But I also have some of the sommelier. I actually have, um, I don't know, probably maybe 20 of sommelier professional colors. So I do tend to, to go grab those, but boy, oh boy. You can't beat their student range. You really can't. I love how well they layer. I'm just like going in and um, having fun just adding little swashes of layering. And I think it's really nice because if you like the student grade, then you're going to be like, then, then you go to the artist grade. You're not going to have a huge learning curve. I know Windsor Newton Cotman and, and Windsor Newton are pretty similar too. They're not my favorite paints. I mean, they're good, don't get me wrong, but they're not my favorites. And I think you, everybody gets their own, um, their own feel for what works best for their, their method of painting. Um, now the reference photo, there's definitely more orangey color in the drink, but I don't know if I want more orangey color in my drink, to be honest. I don't think I do. I'm gonna grab my smaller brush. I've gone back to using this grimy old water bucket because it just works so well for, because it's got ridges in there for the dirty water, clean water there. I've had it for like 20 years. And I was going to get rid of it because I'm like, oh, it's so gross looking. Nobody wants to look at that. Uh, but I'm like, you know what? It's really tough to beat. I love that water container. It works so well. It never is tippy. I use mason jars upstairs in my office just because I can clean them really well. And my cat likes to drink water from my water bucket. So when I'm done each day, I clean my water buckets and put fresh water in them. Uh, but the cat doesn't drink from my, my, uh, I don't leave the water here. I just empty and I don't fill it up until I'm ready to paint again. So it's not that big of a deal. Uh, but upstairs, the cat sneaks in there. I can't comment on how good the white is. I haven't used the white from there. I think I would just go in with a, um, a white paint pen if I wanted to do some white. We could try it. We could see how it is on the ice cubes. Well, I don't know. I don't think it really, I think the ice cubes are fine. Um... Let's put some water in there and see how it. I didn't. I didn't pre-spray any of these colors either. So look at that. It does. It does rewet pretty well. And I haven't used this palette in probably a year, and uh, and the colors rewet really well. So let's just see. It's a cool white. We can't tell how opaque it is till it dries. You know, it might not be too bad. I typically. If I'm gonna use white, I will go with a gouache or you know, geez, Louise, that like <laughs> actually is pretty good for a for a watercolor white. Now the only downside to this set, it's not only really downside, but there's no these pans are set in little inserts. Um, you can fit half pans into that middle tray, but the um, the 24 are all separated and there's no little plastic pans. You can't move them around. I like the way they're set up, so that doesn't bother me. But that's just something to consider if you're buying that thinking you're going to recycle the pans. You can definitely refill this with your with two paints. You could go buy tube uh, Sennelier, either the artist or the student grade, and you could refill that, no problem. But uh, you, there's no removable pans. I'm going to just, now I'm not even sure this is all dry underneath, but I'm just going to see. It's not all dry underneath, but boy. Hey, that works pretty well. That looks nice and glossy to me. I would wash my brush. I am washing my brush, actually, because... Um, because the paint was wet underneath and it did pick up some paint, so I don't want to put that paint back in. I am going to... This is really good too when you want those kind of like um, softer reflections. Let's see how it does on the pith. Let's see if I can bring my pith on my line back. 
But hey, and that's kind of nice if you, you know, want to go kind of wild and not use masking fluid and, and uh, be able to get back in. That's pretty good. Let me add some little highlights on my strawberry. Boy, this is taking longer than I intended, but, um, but I'm having fun with it. I hope you guys are. I hope you like this. I guess you wouldn't be watching if you didn't, right? Uh, okay, I can add a little bit to the, and I could do, you could do this with a pen as well. Um, that's not going to stand up so much on that because the, the color is so pale, but I think it's all right. Oh, that's fun. I've never used that white before in this set. It's neat to know that it works pretty well. Yeah, I don't want to use too much because I feel like it does take some of the freshness away though. I'm going to go in with a lemon yellow. Now your yellows do tend to be a little bit more opaque, uh, opaque anyway. And even though I really can't see the yellow seeds on the strawberry in the reference photo, I still want to put them in. It's the same color. I can add a little bit more yellow in my lime. Add a little bit to the pith too even. I like that. Do what you want to do. I like it. So if you are looking for an affordable paint, um, you might want to give these a consideration. I think the set's around $30 for 24 colors. Um, there is a strap on the bottom if you like to hold your paint. Um, if you want to hold your paint box, there is a like a hand strap. You can put your whole hand under it. Um, that would probably be more handy if you like to paint um, standing up at an easel. I usually have everything laying flat when I'm painting, but you can obviously, you know what you like to do best. I think I'm going to call that done. I think it's nice and fresh and I'm going to let it dry before I sign it, but I hope you enjoyed this. Please give me a thumbs up if you did. Let me know in the comments below and until next time, happy crafting.